I'm completing the fast of July with zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 24 hour fast starting on July 2nd that ends on July 3rd, just in time to celebrate the 4th of July. So I invite you to do it with me, but you don't have to do a 24 hour fast. You can do whatever length of fast that you want. But if this is your first time doing a longer fast, I have a few simple tips for you. Okay, first and foremost, when you go into a longer fast, I highly recommend that you keep it relatively low carb your first couple of meals going into the fast. So for example, if you're going to start your fast after dinner, go ahead and eat a low carb dinner. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make it so you're not gonna have to deal with the blood sugar roller coaster quite as much, but it's also going to make it so you have a higher chance of getting into that ketogenic state a little bit faster within your fast, which not only gets you more benefits, but it also satiates you a little bit, so you don't quite I don't know, feel as hungry. Okay, another thing that you want to consider doing is taking in some magnesium throughout the course of the day of your fast. So take it shortly after you start your fast, then, I don't know, take a couple of magnesium tabs between the time that you wake up and the time that you break your fast the next day. Additionally, you can consume some apple cider vinegar and it might help you out with the blood sugar roller coaster a little bit more as well. I generally don't recommend taking a whole lot in the way of supplements during an extended fast. Why? Because your body has its own unique mechanisms and its own coping systems. You don't want to take things like vitamin C because that's going to counteract the positive effect of the fast. Okay, then when it comes down to breaking your fast, there's a few things you want to pay attention to. One thing I recommend is having a little bit of cinnamon about an hour before you actually break your fast. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bring cortisol levels down a little bit so you have less of a potential negative impact on any carbohydrates that do come in after you break your fast. Now, for physically breaking your fast itself, what you wanna pay attention to is getting a good amount of thiamine in. Now, thiamine comes in usually from chicken or beef or from meat sources. So I recommend that you get that because it's not uncommon to be depleted in thiamine after a fast, and that plays a big role in glucose metabolism. Another thing that's really important is to get your B vitamins in. One of the ways that you can do that is by either utilizing a B-complex vitamin or, believe it or not, bee pollen or bee propolis or even a tiny bit of manuka honey has a good amount of B vitamins that are gonna help support the carbohydrate metabolism so that you can get a better effect from the food that you eat after you break your fast. So lean protein with a little bit of a bee complex or bee pollen or something like that. And then about an hour later, go ahead and enjoy a little bit more of a robust meal. The most important thing is lean protein right when you break your fast. Another thing that I know someone's gonna probably think about, bone broth. You can indeed break your fast with bone broth, but wait about 30 minutes after you consume the bone broth before you consume some solid food. So I hope that you join me with this. I'm super excited for it, and let's take on the fast of July.